Hello everyone! In this video I want to show you how you can use AI tools for post-production to elevate your render to the next level. So no further ado, let's get right into this video. This video is more like a part 2 of the last video that I created about post-production. In that video we also exported some files or maps that we are going to use in this video. If you don't know how to get these different map types, it's really easy. I will show you. We open Lumion, we open our project, we go to the photo option, we select our render that we want to create, we press on render photo, and over here we can select our additional output. So for this video, I only want to have the material map ID, and then we can print it to whatever resolution you want. I will go with the 4K. After we have exported our files, we go to our web browser. In our web browser, we're going to search for the website Crea AI. We go to the home and then we're going to sign in. You can log in with Google or create an account if you don't have one yet. Crea AI is a website with different AI tools. We can generate images, but we can also enhance images. For this video, we are going to use the enhancement tool that Crea AI has to offer. They have a free and a paid version and we are going to take a look for the free option for the enhancement tool. So for this video, we are here in the home, we have logged in and now we can go to the enhance option. Over here we can drag and drop our image that we want to create and drag and drop our image. So Crea AI has added our image over here in the right. You can upscale it to 1K or 2K. 2K is the max. You can't upscale it to 4K because then as it says, you have to upgrade to the pro version. Now for the enhancement, we can just go here and enhance it, but there are some settings that we can play with. First, we can add a prompt. We can just auto prompt. So it's going to give a description of the render, but what it sees. So these are the sliders that we are going to use. We have AI strength, resemblance, and clarity. AI strength is of course the strength of the AI and the amount of AI it's going to use. The resemblance is of course how much it's going to keep our default render that we have imported. And the clarity is actually going to add a certain sharpness to the render. And you will see what I mean in a second. And we have over here also the color correction. We're just going to keep that off. And the negative prompt, we are not going to use that as well. So for these sliders, I have played with a little bit. And for this video, we want to have the AI strength for about 45%. The resemblance about 70. And the clarity, we're going to lower that. And now we're going to enhance our picture. As it says, this may wait a few minutes. So we have to wait for the AI to enhance our image. After Crea is done, is it's going to give us our base render and it's going to give us a slider. Or we can go to the left or the right to see the difference. This is the default render that we have imported. And if I go to the left with the slider, we will see the AI generated version of it. The fun fact about the AI tool is that this is actually going to give us a little bit more realism. It's going to add some, as you can see, little details and imperfections to the house, to the building. And this is why we need the resemblance to be a little bit higher instead of what it says. And we're going to, and we have put the AI strength lower. If we are going to, or because this is a perfect uh, example where we are going to use this one, but I will also give you one with some different settings. So for example, if I put the resemblance lower, for example, to 30, and I'm going to increase the AI strength to, for example, this time, let's say 70, and go to enhance the picture again. Let's see what it gives us now. So the picture is done. Let's take a look. As you can see, if you put the resemblance lower and the AI strength higher, you will see that it keeps straight, but it just it's a completely different outcome. As you could see in the difference between the first one and the second one, the difference is big and the second one is even more realistic and has a lot more detail to it than the first one. But the first one is closer to the render and actually the outcome of our project. This is why AI can be used as a tool and not to completely render your projects. When we are happy with our render, we go press the right mouse button over here and we can download the picture or you can go over here to the download button in the right down corner. For the next step, let's open Photoshop. So in Photoshop, we go and create a new file. We're going to create a full HD one and let's go over here to create. Let's import all our files. Let's select them and press done, done and done. I want to remove the background, so delete that one. I want the map ID 
would be underneath everything and I want the normal render on top of the enhanced render because for the, uh, the render exterior we are going to add a mask to it we do that over here now we're going to try and cut out parts that we want to have the AI version instead of our normal render so and this is why the map ID comes into place because for example I don't like the grass over here so we're going to change that grass for the AI grass that we have so I'm going to select the mask option make sure to have the black color selected now we're going to hide these parts of the render and go to the magic wand make sure you have the continuous so let's select the grass area and then after we have selected the grass area we can go to back to our mask option and then fill this area in with black now it's of course gray but if we go and put the enhancement on you will see now there is added that ai grass that we have seen you may also see that the edges hasn't been selected and you can also see it's way more blurrier than of course the render over here we will fix that later on to fix this we go and select our brush tool I'm going to change the brush example like this make sure we have selected the black color make sure we have selected the mask make sure to deselect the area and now we can paint some parts black and while doing that you will see that the grass is actually coming back and you will also see a little bit of difference but that's not a problem we can fix that later on let's do that over here as well beautiful so now we have the ai grass added to our scene but that's only a small part i want to add almost all the green and vegetation there is to the render from the enhanced part so we can do that doing the exact same thing that we just did but with but with the map id of course so with this part we can select elements for example uh, this green over here and this over here and we can hold the the shift key and then we can select multiple colors it's a little bit of a tedious work but the outcome will be really great So we have selected some parts and now you can see that there is a little bit of a difference if we hide some certain places but of course we want to add a little bit more detail so what we're going to do is we haven't selected everything yet as you can see there are still some plants that haven't been selected so we go and do exactly the same thing that we just did with the edge of the grass we're going to paint some parts so let's do that right now and let's paint on top of some parts let's do this for all the places that we want to add a little bit more of the ai to The render is starting to look great, but we can add a little bit more detail to the foliage. Let me show you how. So after we have added all our plants to the scene that we have created and we have added the mask to it, um, we can take the next step. We're going to add a little bit more sharpness to the render and especially the foliage that we have masked out. So we're going to select the enhanced render. We go to filter and we go to sharpen and then we go to the sharpen smart sharpen option. Now we can, for example, look at the grass as a reference, but we can also look it up over here because it's the same. And now, as you can see, if you remove the preview and select it, you will see there is a little difference. I want to actually upgrade this to 300. And if we zoom in right now, you will see that the foliage is way sharper than if I remove this. As you can see, there's way more detail right now into the foliage. So that's perfect. Also in the grass, there is way more detail now. And after we have done that, we can go over here. As you can see when playing with the opacity, this is the normal render. And if we put it lower, you will see there is a lot more detail. So let's add a little bit more detail and let's put it about 30%. So there is more detail now in the render thanks to the AI enhanced version of it. And also thanks to the sharpener, the picture of the image is also a little bit sharper. So for the next step, I want to select both of the layers that we have and then i'm going to merge the layers so if you are red happy with how it looks we're going to merge the layers and the reason why i'm going to merge the layers and i'm also going to convert it to a smart object is because i want to go over here 
and change the camera raw filter so we can add a little bit more of an effect to our render we can press auto to see i think the exposure is a little bit too high we could lower it indeed contrast can be a little bit more dark areas need to be dark uh, shadows well let's keep a little bit of shadows i want to keep a little bit of highlights as well so something like this let's say i want the saturation to be a bit lower vibrance indeed maybe a little bit higher maybe one temperature extra for the color perfect so for the effects maybe the haze maybe a little bit clarity texture not too much just for adding a little bit of detail uh curve we could make the shadows a little bit more tall let's make a little arch over here just a bit make it a little bit light like the render and uh, color gradient let's make the shadows again a little bit more blue let's make the highlights a little bit more orange just a little bit let's see beautiful let's keep it like that for the detail sharpening no we're not going to use that the render is already sharp enough and we already have a lens blur to the render so we're not going to change that let's take a look this was the render and this is it after some post-production i think the sky is a little bit too dark for this scene so let's change that so to make the sky a little bit lighter we need another map for it because the map id has a little bit of an overlap when you export it to lumion so what we are going to do we go to we're going to add the exterior reduction and on the light map press done because over here the sky is black so if i'm going to select the wand and i'm going to select this part you will see that the sky is going to be selected everything that's black now when we have selected this let's move it back so we have is this selected this area and then make a copy of this layer and then add a mask to this so with this mask we only have everything that's white as you can see over here it's the sky so that's only going to be visible and it's going to be atop of our other render so now if i go to the camera raw filter and go to edit smart filter i can increase the exposure a little bit and maybe go to the color and maybe make it a little bit more blue as well let's remove that one temperature so it's a little bit more blue now you can if we unhide you can see it's a little bit lighter i actually like this it's a little bit more so for the last step we can use of course the ai tool in photoshop itself the ai tool in photoshop itself is not really good but for things like adding and removing certain objects in your render it's actually perfect and it will do what you say but if you want to change something that's not a great option to do because then the ai doesn't know what to do with it so for example with that in mind we can for example go over here do the watermark even though you are not allowed to remove it i'm going to show you how you could remove it so select it we can generate fill and then i want to say remove watermark the ai tool is going to created on based on what you see it's also the last step that you need to take so for example now it's changed and for example if i go over here to the camera raw filter and i'm going to change some things you will see that for example the temperature you will see that it's going to be blue and then if i press ok you will see it's not going to change as well so that's why you need to do this step as last now let's for example go over here i don't like this little plant that's over here so let's do this as well so let's go over top on this and let's say remove grass generate and as you can see it removed this piece of grass this is really helpful to change certain elements like this now we have removed some elements now let's for example add some birds to the sky so let's let's select maybe a little bit of her a bigger area for example like this is this nice yeah let's say generate fill uh add cluster of small flying birds to the sky let's see what it creates it added some birds but it's maybe too much and this one would be fine if this bigger one wasn't there so let's but it's closer what we wanted so we're going to generate another one with the same prompt that's better this is still a little bit too much and these are in my opinion too big so let's generate another one if you look at the render and you will see this i think this is yes i'm gonna keep this we have some birds added to the sky right now i'm pretty happy with the end result this is how you can use the ai tool to enhance your render this is also how you can add a little bit more detail to your render now we can export it as a png to your computer somewhere and now let's see the results with the exported version of Lumion and now the 
one with post-production thanks with some AI tools that I reused. But that's it for this video. If you learned something new about AI and post-production, let me know in the comments. Also, leave a like and consider subscribing if you want to see more of my videos. And I hopefully see you guys in the next video.